Okay, hello everyone. Today we have a very exciting guest uh, coming coming in, and she's going to be talking to us about cross sectional study design. So I'm very excited to introduce Dr. Ziguang Zhang. Um, she did her PhD. She obtained her PhD at the University of Wollongong, and now she's a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Alberta in Edmonton. Uh, in Edmonton. So welcome, yeah. Dr. Zhang, and, and thanks for doing this for us. Oh, thank you, Dr. Lee. This is uh, my pleasure to doing this, and thank you for offering me this nice opportunity. Amazing. So um, I just give, gave students a brief intro about you. Do you want to mm -hmm. uh, say something about yourself? Yeah, um, so, so I um, about my background or in general? Yeah, in general, in, in, in general. any way that you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. So I, um, I come from a multiple discipline background, I would say. Um, so I did my bachelor's degree in biology and then master's degree in education. And then for my PhD, so I did those two degree in China. And then I moved to Australia um, and my research is about um, the relationship between the child care environment, young children's physical activity, and uh, adiposity. And then I um, got this postdoc um, opportunity in UL Alberta, and my research is still focused on the child care environment, children's movement behaviors, and uh, health outcome. Nice. So mm -hmm. how, how did you get into from biology to behavioral medicine and population health and, and were you always interested in young children's um, physical activity and the environment? Um, so for from biology to education, um, this transfer is related to a small project I conducted when I'm doing my bachelor's degree. So mm -hmm. it's a, about health education, and I find this quite interesting uh, about this component. So when I do my master, I want to transfer my major into that direction. And so my master's degree is more focusing on the environment, uh, environmental influence on teachers' health. Mm. But then... Um, the transfer to young children, I think it's more about um, that I find the supervisor um, right. uh, major is more about this area and I find this very interesting. Um, and then I started to dip into this um, area, I guess. Mm -hmm. So you didn't, it sounds like you didn't really plan anything, but it just it yeah. just happened naturally naturally exactly yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i think yeah i think that's pretty common in academia and among ac yeah. academics yeah yeah I, I guess when i doing my bachelor's degree i was um still in the in the stage of exploring i don't mm -hmm. know like uh, what would be my main um research interest and even mm -hmm. after my i did my bachelor oh uh, sorry master's degree i went to work in the government for mm -hmm. like a year. And then mm -hmm. I decided to continue doing the research because at that time, I, I'm not quite sure if I really want to continue doing research or not. Mm -hmm. So I think it's nice to take a little bit break to think what I really want to do in the future. Oh yeah, that's a really good advice. Yeah, so, yeah. and you don't know where you're gonna end up, but um, you know, you can always take a break think about it and, and decide as the opportunities come along, I yeah. guess. Yeah. yeah, I guess because at that time, and even now, we are still young and um, yeah. yeah, we have, a, we still have time and to figure out what we want. And uh, there's no rush to make decisions or decide what we're going to do in the future. I think it's just take the moment to focus on what we are doing at the moment and yeah. Um, yeah and at the same time we will eventually figure out so uh, what we want to do in future yeah nice that's that's a really good advice thanks for sharing that yeah yeah <laughs> of course um, yeah. yeah so the topic that we're going to talk about today is um, mm -hmm. the cross-sectional study design so can you tell mm -hmm. us 
a little bit about what that is and what what does that study design entails? Sure. So um, the cross-sectional study is a type of observational study design. Mm -hmm. um, so for all the observational study, it means um, we don't interfere the subjects or manipulate the environment. Mm -hmm. um, so we just uh, want, and for, for cross-sectional studies, we want to um, examine the exposure and the, and the outcome at one time point. Mm -hmm. So it's like we want to take a snapshot of the behavior and the, uh, sorry, the exposure and the outcome. Mm -hmm. And the findings are drawn from whatever fits in the frame. Right, so um, yeah. Oh, oh so t before we move on, two really yeah. important points about cross-sectional study. So mm -hmm. we, just observe what's going on. We don't yep. interfere um, and we don't manipulate the environment like experimental mm -hmm. study does. Mm -hmm. um, and the second important point you made is that we measure the exposure and outcome at one time point, at single time point. Or exactly. is that correct? Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. 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 So yeah, so that's basically the, the cross-sessional study. Mm -hmm. And um, so this type of study have its strengths because you, you only measure everything at one time point. So mm -hmm. it's relatively quick to mm -hmm. conduct the study and mm -hmm. uh, it's not as expensive as longitudinal study or experimental study. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be a good um, start if you want to establish an association or observe the prevalence um, mm -hmm. at the beginning, um, especially if there's little evidence in this area. Right. Yeah, yeah, so students are now, they learned about two different types of epidemiology, one descriptive epidemiology, the other one analytic epidemiology. And you mm -hmm. already alluded uh, to these uh, two different types already, but can you reiterate what those two, how we can distinguish those two and in research, what do we look for, for descriptive and analytic? Sure. Um, so for example, if you want to apply a cross-sectional study design for mm -hmm. descriptive purpose, Mm -hmm. um, we can take, uh, for example, if you want to look at a, a prevalence of um, a behavior or a disease, mm. um, that is a descriptive um, study. Mm -hmm. And you can use cross-sectional design for this type of study. Um, for example, I can, at this time point, I can take a, I can do, conduct a survey and to look at the prevalence of physical activity in the population or the prevalence of um, uh, obesity um, percentage in the population, that is um, a cross-sectional study design. And uh, for analytic study, we can also apply cross-sectional design that we can look at the association between an exposure, for example, behavior and an outcome, for example, adiposity uh, at mm -hmm. a certain time point. Um, so we can measure this um, exposure and outcome at um, uh, one single time point, and then mm -hmm. we can use statistic, statistic methods to examine the associations between these two variables. Right, that's awesome. So many important points about cross-sectional <laughs> studies are already being covered. So I just want to go back to the you know strength of cross-sectional design. And Dr. Zhang mentioned that it you can do it uh, quickly. You can collect data quickly because it's easy mm -hmm. um, compared to longitudinal or experimental studies. Um, and also, um, what was the other one? Uh, analytic studies, like we, when we look when looking at the associations. No, uh, oh, strength. Oh, yeah, being cheap. Strength, cheap and yeah, inexpensive. Right. Yeah, right. Cheap. So being quick, cheap, and uh, convenience, convenience, convenience. Yeah. yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So, and Dr. Zhang just gave us the, the um, descriptive and how descriptive and analytic epidemiology can be applied into um, the cross-sectional research design. So thanks so much for, for uh, sharing that. Um, and sure. now we have this research exhibit that you provided. So the title is Proportion of Kindergarten Children Meeting the WHO Guidelines on Physical Activity, Sedentary Behavior, and Sleep, and Associations with Adiposity in Urban Bathing. So yeah. can you tell us a little bit about what this study is about? Sure. So uh, I think when we started this study, that is the, the time point when the new WHO guidelines for young children just developed. Mm. And, um, and we are very, because, because this guideline um, recommended some similar up, amount of physical activity, sedentary behavior and sleep, similar to the Australian or Canadian guidelines. Um, and at that time, um, there are a few surveillance studies that have been published um, for the data in high income countries like Australia, Canada, uh, UK or America. Mm -hmm. But um, at that time, we also were interested in, in China because there is not many research in this age group. And um, it seems more... Um, so, so there's also no guideline, no national guidelines in China mm -hmm, for this age mm -hmm. group. So we saw that the WHO guidelines might be applicable for um, children in China. And we are interested in the proportion of children meeting this guideline. And we want to compare our data with high income countries. Mm -hmm. So that's, a, that's a, the beginning ideas. We want to start this study. Um, yeah, and at the same time, we also want to know whether this um, com whether compliance to these guidelines have um, any relationship with um, health outcomes in children, and uh, we have some data on their adiposity. Um, so we we think, oh, maybe we can to examine whether there's associations between meeting guidelines and uh, their adiposity levels. Mm -hmm. That's uh, yeah. the initial yeah. source for this paper. Nice. Yeah. Th thanks for that. So it sounds like this paper, this cross-sectional study um, contributes to or addresses at least two objectives epidem of epidemiology. So in the earlier lectures, um, my the students of Health 323, we learned that um, one of the objectives of epidemiology is to identify risk factor for a mm -hmm. disease. And another objective was that it informs policy making. Um, mm -hmm. And also it gives um, researchers an opportunity to continue monitoring the progress or, or um, you know, so I think this paper is really relevant to our course in that sense because uh, based on the literature review or and uh, based on the evidence, we WHO has developed guidelines on physical activity, sedentary behavior and sleep. So that's public health policy made, mm. made at the global level. And yep. this study is to is kind of going back to the beginning based on the policy that's developed to continue the monitoring of, of children's behavior and their, their health. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that is actually one, I would I'd say, um, so cross-sectional studies serves a nice purpose for monitoring, health monitoring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, for example, in this study, we examine the prevalence of um, children meeting guidelines, mm -hmm. and then we made some comparisons with this data in other countries. So we can see mm -hmm. in which area, um, for example, China need to improve. For mm -hmm. example, we find that um, there is a low um, proportion of children um, mm -hmm. meeting the sleep guidelines, but compared mm -hmm. to other countries, the, the difference is actually really large. 
So we might need to reflect on what we should do um, with this right. situation. Yeah. 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 So then, I, I, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh. Um, and also, I I want to say is that um, because this is a newly developed um, guideline, so we did a cross-sectional study immediately. But then, I think you can also do uh, a series of cross-sectional studies for surveillance purpose, and mm -hmm. you can compare uh, within the country to see each generations um, whether there's a change in this in this um, behaviors. Um, and also you can also compare with different countries. I, I guess that's um, um, one very useful way for processional studies. Uh -huh. Wow, that's, that's so again, so many important points. But <laughs> just to summarize for our students. So um, through cross-sectional study, we can again, uh, you know, for example, with this study, we found that the adherence to the guidelines is pretty low among Chinese um, children, then we can start thinking about, okay, what can we do to improve behavioral patterns among these children so that mm. they can, more children can meet the guidelines. So again, this surveillance and monitoring efforts is informing future public health uh, policy making. Yeah. Am I understanding correctly? Yeah, I think uh, I think your summary is really nice. Um, but I just want to add a point because when you say uh, that reminds me, I should add that um, in this study, the sample is a convenient sample, so it's not mm. representative sample. So mm -hmm. it's um, we that means this sample may not represent all Chinese people. For example, right. this is a, a sample drawn from urban Beijing where mm. the income is relatively higher than the rest of the country. Mm. So even we find that uh, there is a low compliance rate um, of sleep guidelines, it doesn't mean that all, all the part of the country has a similar rate. Um, but another, another, so you can do another, uh, some other studies, some other cross-sectional studies in different provinces of China, and then you can yeah. compare um, whether the compliance rates are similar or different. Um, I think that's probably another thing to do after this study published. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so yeah, again, good point. So yeah. this study is based on a sample um, in urban Beijing, China. So the results um, are only applicable to that population living in urban Beijing, China. Um, yeah. And if we want to expand our knowledge, then, you know, researchers can, can go dif to different places in China and collect mm -hmm. uh, data from different samples and make the conclusion out of multiple studies. So sort of like conducting systematic reviews then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also with the, the sample choice, um, if we want to make them more um, representative, we we'll probably mm -hmm. need to consider their their age and um, their family, socioeconomic status, their gender. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there might be a lot of um, uh, factors we need to consider when we um, want to do a more representative description of the, the guideline mm. compliance of the country. But mm -hmm. uh, I guess this, this study would be a good start to, yes. um, to do this, um, to look at the the status in, in China at the, mm -hmm. at the yeah. moment, yeah. Yeah, like you said, um, you know, in China, evidence is low, it's understudied, one of the understudied populations. So this mm -hmm. study is a really good start. And we can also conduct a series of uh, cross-sectional studies, like you mentioned, so repeated cross-sectional studies to continue to observe the trends and the changes in these behaviors um, and yeah. the guideline adherence. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. Awesome point. Thanks yeah. for sharing Thanks. that. So uh, yeah. one more thing that I want to discuss with you. So yeah. in this study, what is um, descriptive epidemiology and what component um, indicates or what components relate to analytic epidemiology, would you say? 
Uh, I think, for example, in this study, um, mm -hmm. in addition to the, the compliance rates of, for each of the guidelines, we also find that um, 16 around 16% of the children are overweight. Mm -hmm. So this kind of like we take a snapshot of this sample and then we find oh, around 16 of them, they are mm -hmm. overweight. Um, this kind of like uh, a descriptive of, of this sample using this processional design. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and what about analytic epidemiology in, in, from this paper? Yeah, so, um, so after this descriptive, the guideline compliance and the, the, the percentage of adiposity, Mm -hmm. um, we want to look whether these two things has any relationship. So mm -hmm. we did um, analysis, uh, association analysis with use linear, sorry, uh, logistic re regression um, mm -hmm. to look at meeting guidelines, whether um, have um, will lead to uh, increased the risk um, in um, adiposity. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, my, my wording is not very... Um, uh, very, it's not very good because usually with cross-sectional studies, we cannot say one thing lead to another. We cannot draw a causal re relationship. We mm -hmm. only find that they are associated. So they have some kind of relationship, but we don't know uh, whether that is a causal relationship. But right. uh, anyway, from this study, we find that um, um, meeting the Standard, the screen time guideline mm -hmm. um, may be uh, associated with lower odds of being overweight in mm. young children. Mm -hmm. yeah. So based on that analytic epidemiology data, I guess one of the takeaways from this paper is that perhaps screen time, perhaps, because we cannot mm -hmm. infer causality based on cross-sectional yeah. study, but yeah. we can say perhaps screen time is important um, in where screen time is associated with adiposity. So higher screen time, more likely to be ob obese. Is yeah. that the correct yeah. interpretation? Yeah, I think so. I think it, we can say something like uh, children who watch uh, screen time, to, who have screen time more than one hour a day, we mm -hmm. found those children are more likely have a higher adiposity. I think mm. that is something we can draw from this paper. But we we don't know whether there's a causal relationship because it's probably because children who have a lot of screen time, they eat a lot of food in mm. front of the screen and lead right. to adiposity. So we don't know whether there's a causal relationship. Right. Um, I guess that's one limitation of um, the observational studies, mm -hmm. uh, especially with cross-sectional studies. Right. So I guess from this paper, we can, um, we can assume or we can inform po policymakers that perhaps mm -hmm. lowering screen time may help children to uh, maintain healthy weight but mm. it has to be done with caution. So we cannot say this is really important. So you have to change the law so that children spend less time on, on in front of the screen. It's not like that. Is that correct? Yeah, I think so. Um, because I feel like uh, the evidence usually provided by cross-sectional studies are relatively weak. Mm. So we can say there's not enough or not strong uh, evidence to um, to make the policy change because mm. we only observed an association be between this behavior and this health outcome, but mm -hmm. we don't know whether this behavior leads to the health outcome. But right. it would be a nice step to do that because we we did have some evidence that they have some associations. So mm -hmm. limiting screen time may be a good strategy to prevent um, health, uh, obesity in young mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thanks, mm -hmm. thanks for talking to us about cross-sectional study design and the example was really good. I think it really 
facilitated our conversation and it was really mm. enjoyable for me. Um, so is there anything that you want to convey to our students? Uh, well, I think, uh, uh, well, in, in, in terms of the study design, mm -hmm. I want to say that um, usually, uh, I, I mean, nowadays we, as a researcher, we want to publish studies um, with some longitudinal design or observation, uh, sorry, experimental design, because and we also want to conduct this type um, of studies because those studies are more likely to get published. Mm. But um, cross-sectional studies still have its um, value because, for example, um, it can help the public health um, to make some decisions or for the monitoring purpose and for the evaluation purpose, it still mm -hmm, has its yeah. value, the cross-sectional study. And sometimes with larger samples, um, this study can, can be very good. And usually, for example, if you want to uh, conduct a longitudinal study or even a RCT study, you can still use the baseline data to mm -hmm. perform some cross-sectional studies um, so you can make use of all the data that you have, which would be very nice. But uh, yeah, if you want to uh, have some really strong evidence, um, I guess cross-sectional studies have its limitation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, for the other parts, I just feel like research can be something, um, it can be something really exciting and interesting, but sometimes you it really make you um, feel can, especially for example when your paper when your paper gets rejected you started to doubt yourself especially when I, I have I had experienced more rejection with cross-sectional studies but uh, I feel like uh, we should still have belief in this um, study design <laughs> yeah oh yeah. my gosh, oh my gosh. Really, yeah, really, I yeah I agree with you 100 hmm. percent I conduct lots of cross-sectional studies myself um there's a you know a lot of values associated with conducting and publishing cross-sectional studies um mm. but you know from the publisher's point of view the it's undervalued compared to other longitudinal or experimental studies where um there's more investment and there's more time involved etc and there's more money involved um yeah. But cross-sectional study has its own role to play in public mm. health policy formation. And yeah. I really appreciate you uh, bringing that point um, to our students. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for coming in today uh, to speak to us. And yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.